بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم بیک فرنڈز ویلکم بیک ٹو نیدر ویڈیو لیکچر بائی کامی مایکرو بیالوجیس ٹوڈین دیس ویڈیو لیکچر وی آر گونٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا بلڈ ایگر میڈیم ناو دیس ایز دا سیونت ویڈیو لیکچر ویچ ایز ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا کلچر میڈیا اینڈ ان دا پریویس سکس ویڈیو لیکچر وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ٹائپس آف دا کلچر میڈیا ایز ویل ایز وی ٹاک واٹ از کلچر میڈیا اف یو مس دیس ویڈیو لیکچر سو گو بیک ٹو مائی چینل اینڈ واچ دیس ویڈیو ناؤ واٹ از blood agar medium so let's talk about that first of all this blood agar medium is again the type of the culture media but this is what this is the enriched media why because this media contain the nutrient which is present in the triptych soy agar media means peptone triptone yeast extract these are all the nutrients so that's why we can say it is enriched media moreover it is the generalized media because in this media every type of the bacteria can grow like fastidious and non fastidious bacteria this media is also differential media as well because through this media we can differentiate the hemolytic bacteria some of them are beta hemolytic some of them are alpha and some of them are uh, gamma hemolytic that's why we can say that is it is a hemolytic uh, th- this is differential media moreover it is also a basal g- bacterial growth medium as well because through this media the support is provided for the bacteria in the form of the agar due to which the colony can easily be grow then this media you know Uh, contain 5% of the blood after the sterilization then we add 5% of the mammalian blood and moreover this media also contain triptic soy agar uh, uh, ingredient as well now due to the presence of these two material this media provide the growth or support for the fastidious organism uh, all of you better know that fastidious organism are those who you know need uh, special types of the nutrient for their growth which is not provided by the nutrient media so that's why we can prepare the triptych soy uh, we can use the triptych soy agar uh, for the blood agar formation moreover if we want to use uh, the human blood uh, because we better know that once the media is at clave so then we mix the blood in this media okay but mostly we use uh, mammal blood not the human blood if we use the human blood so then the human blood contain fibrinogens now the presence of this fibrinogens uh, is actually kill the bacteria nigeria and hemophilias due to this way we do not detect the nigeria and hemophilias and some other pathogenic bacteria as well okay now if we want to still to use this human blood uh, so we have to you know after adding this uh, blood uh, so after adding uh, so this blood uh, so then what we will do we will heat it so once we heat it so then this media will be you know the color of this media is converted into chocolate form dark brown color so that's why we can also say that it is a chocolate medium now after converted this media into chocolate agar so then the fibrinogen is uh, converted into essential growth factor which we call that uh, 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 f- factor 5 and due to this way we finally grow the bacteria hemophilus and nigeria okay now this media we can also make this media selectable by adding antibiotics chemicals and some dyes now if we have using the uh, uh, you know uh, dyes like crystal violet so it will specially used to select the bacteria streptococcus pyogen which we isolated from the throat swab now if we add kanamycin or neomycin antibiotics in this media so it will select the anaerobic bacteria which we isolated from the pus now how we can use this media mostly this media is used for the isolation of bacillus streptococcus enterococcus staphylococcus aerococcus as well and we can detect this bacteria on the base of hemolytic property because some of them bacteria produce beta hemolysis colony alpha some of them alpha some of them gamma and some of them do not produce hemolytic colonies which we call non hemolytic like e coli 
We also use this media for the cultivation or isolation of Neisseria as well as Streptococcus, like Streptococcus pyogenes, Streptococcus epidermitis as well. This media is also used for the isolation of Salmonella, or we can specially use this media for the Salmonella typhorium antigen. Moreover, we use this media for the food analysis as well. Now, if we want to check the food sample, uh, whether it contains the bacteria uh, like Colostridium perforanges and some other types of foodborne pathogen, so we mostly use this media. This media is also used for the isolation of other type of the bacteria like E. coli, Pseudomonas, uh, we have a Neutrobacter bomonae, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that we can use it for the identification purpose of the, the bacteria which I told. Now, it doesn't mean like that. If you use it for the identification purpose, so you mostly use it for the identification of Streptococcus, Enterococcus, Staphylococcus, these type of the bacteria you can identify through using this media. Okay. Now, what are the composition of this media? As we talked that mostly we use triptych soy agar. Here I just uh, wrongly write Newton agar, but mostly it contains, you know, triptych soy agar in gelatin. So, it contains peptone, yeast extract, NaCl, agar, distal water. So, all these ingredients are also, uh, you know, present in the nutrient agar as well. But mostly, mostly we use triptych soy agar. If we do not have the blood agar powder, let's suppose. So, then we use triptych soy agar media. So, now adding these ingredients, these are the uh, amount of the ingredient for 1 liter. So, adding these ingredients in 1 liter, then heat mix it, autoclave it and then use. After the autoclave, so then add 5% of the blood. So the blood will be the mammalian blood. Okay. Now after autoclaving, if we add mammalian blood, so then we will mix well. After that, we will then pour it into sterilized petri plate. As I already told you that human blood is not used because it contains the inhibitory substance like fibrinogen that will stop the growth of some pathogenic bacteria like hemophilus and Nigeria meningitis. Now, this plates, as you can see, showing the colony. This is the colony of beta hemolysis bacteria, as you can see. These are the colonies of alpha hemolysis bacteria. And these are the colony of uh, gamma. Inshallah, in upcoming uh, slides, I will show that how the beta and uh, alpha and uh, gamma will be look like. All of you better know hemolysis. Hemolysis means lysis of the red blood cell or destruction of the red blood cell, which actually, uh, you know, caused by the presence of some type of the bacteria, which will, which will, which we will talk to in this video in upcoming slides. Now, what are the principle of this uh, media? So remember, guys, this media contain the red blood cell. Because after the autoclaving, then we add the blood. Uh, so, blood contain red blood cell. Uh, and when the red blood cell is contained, so then there are some bacteria which can cause the hemolysis. Uh, and we have hemolytic reaction like beta, alpha and gamma hemolytic reaction. And due to this way, we can easily identify the bacteria. Remember guys, if we use sheep blood, uh, so using the sheep blood, we can easily isolate the streptococcus bacteria, streptococci, okay? And using the sheep blood, it will stop or, uh, uh, you know, inhibit the growth of hemophilus hemolytic bacteria. Because using this blood, it do not contain the pyramide nucleotide due to this way, hemophilus hemolytic bacteria cannot grow. Now, question arises in our mind, then what type of the blood we will use for the hemophilus? So, most, uh, definitely we use uh, the horse blood. So, using the horse blood, it will not support only the hemophilus hemolytic bacteria, but it will also provide, uh, you know, uh, it will also um, uh, support the growth of the streptococcus pyogenes as well. Then, this media contain pe uh, peptone yeast extract as well, which provide carbon, nitrogen, amino, amino acid, vitamins, uh, minerals. All these are the most important uh, source of the nutrients. Uh, and these nutrients are specially used for the bacterial growth and division as well. Now, this media is also contained in NACL, uh, and all of you better know NACL is specially used uh, for osmotic maintenance or balance. And all of you better know osmotic balance means if the cell need the ingredient which is present outside, so they will uptake due to the presence of NACL.
and if the material which is present in the cell which are harmful for the cell so these material will be released out due to this osmotic balance which is actually provided by the NaCl this NaCl is also maintain the pH during growth of the bacteria moreover we also use the distilled water remember guys using the distilled water all the ingredients uh, will be easily dissolved or the nutrients will be easily dissolved and due to this way the bacteria will easily absorb the nutrients that's why we not use the tap water because tap water doesn't contain the distillation form okay it contain oils and other material as well and due to this way the nutrients although mixed but still there are some bacteria which do not easily uptake the nutrients when we use the tap water so mostly for the media preparation we use the distal water although tap water is some of the researchers use the tap water but it is not the best option then we use agar and all of you better know agar especially used for the solidifying agent and remember guys a solidifying agent doesn't mean that it will hurt the media it will make the media like gel like okay and it will also provide a stable surface due to this way the bacteria can grow in the form of the colony which we easily observe by naked eye now sometime we add uh, phenylophetine phosphate in this media and due to the addition of this ingredient we can easily identify the staphylococcus which can produce the phosphate so this is the principle of this media now how we can prepare this media so again uh, the same purpose uh, the same procedure which we talked in the previous videos lecture but remember guys uh, if we have triplex y agar or neutron agar so we can also make uh, the blood agar media as well so if you are using neutron agar so you will use 28 gram and if you are using blood agar so you will use 48 gram let's suppose if these two bottles are not available in the lab and the ingredient which we talked in the uh, previous slides uh, if these ingredients are available so then you can also make the blood agar so mix this powder uh, any one of the powder in one liter after that heat mix it uh, using hot plate uh, at 50 to 60 degrees celsius after heat mixing then autoclave it uh, one for 121 at 121 degrees celsius for 15 minutes after autoclaving add 5 percent of the blood at a temperature of 40 to 45 degrees celsius and then mix it well then pour the media in a sterilized petri plates and allow it for the solidification and also avoid the bubble formation now then after the solidification place the plates into a hot air oven to remove the moisture at a temperature of 40 to 50 degrees celsius okay then streak the bacteria for the identification purpose and then incubate this plate for 24 hour at 37 degrees celsius using incubator machine after incubation observe the colony after 24 hour or overnight incubation so this is how we can use this media and prepare this media now let's talk about the result means if we are going to talk about the bacterial identification so how we can identify the bacteria so mostly we identify the bacteria through their colony morphology as we talk that we especially use this for enterococcus salmonella staph aureus uh, streptococcus pneumonia nizera meningita staph epidermis aerococcus bacillus streptococcus pyogen but still i write here klebsiella e coli and pseudomonas because these are what these are the type of escape pathogen that's why it is also important to know about this bacteria although these bacteria are not used for the identification on this media but still if we want to see uh, because it is the uh, you know scap uh, group and all of you better know the scap group is too much important to know about this okay now if we want to check the pseudomonas so remember guys on blood agar it will produce large flat grayish white colony and uh, it will also hemolyze the blood but it will pr produce beta hemolysis colony let me show the beta hemolysis colony of the pseudomonas originosa as you can see these are what these are the beta hemolysis colony these are the beta hemolysis colony Enterococcus will produce smooth creamy or whitish colony with entire edges and it means that it would also what it is also uh, the beta hemolytic colonies so let me show the enterococcus 
you can see this is what this is the enterococcus special colonies salmonella typhorium produce smooth colorless moist and flat colonies means it is non hemolytic or gamma hemolytic so let me show this is the cell uh, <coughs> so these are the growth of the salmonella typhorium and it is non hemolytic as you can see Staphylococcus aureus producing golden yellow circular convex and smooth colonies mean it is beta hemolytic colonies so as you can see this fourth picture showing the growth of salmonella colony of the salmonella and this yellowish uh, zone as we can see it mean beta hemolysis this is what this is the beta hemolysis staphylococcus uh, strip uh, strip pneumonia will produce a small gray moist colonies uh, having zone of alpha hemolysis so let me show you alpha these are the alpha hemolysis as you can see so with colony this uh, you know dark brown uh, zone actually alpha hemolysis nigeria meningitis will produce gray unpigment round smooth moist glazedness and convex having definite edge colonies so, means it is non hemolysis or uh, alpha uh, gamma hemolysis okay step epidermis showing circular grayish to white colonies uh, colored glazedness colonies so it means that it is non uh, homo hemolysis uh, or L, uh, gamma hemolytic uh, zone it will create aerococcus having gray and pinpoint colonies uh, and it is alpha hemolysis uh, zone it have alpha hemolysis zone so let me show the aerococcus so this fourth picture as you can see these are the growth of aerococcus bacteria then we have bacillus which is rough opaque fusy white slightly yellow white uh, judge edge judge edge beta hemolysis colony so let me show the bacillus as you can see these are the bacillus rough colonies okay streptococcus pyogenes have white grayish color colonies surrounded by zone of what beta hemolysis which is actually four times greater than the colony diameter so let me show the streptococcus pyogenes to you guys uh, streptococcus pyogenes uh, these are the streptococcus pyogenes as you can see so this is the colony and if you see the zone so zone is uh, what four times larger than their colonies Klebsiella have gray mucoid colonies uh, means mostly Klebsiella mucoid colonies. It means it is the non-hemolytic. So the second diagram is the colonies of the Streptococcus mucoid uh, gray colony. You can see. E. coli is again large circular grayish white moist smooth and opaque colony which is actually non-hemolytic. So let me show the E. coli and uh, this is are the colonies of the E. coli and it is also non-hemolytic. Uh, there is another extra picture I add here, which is the growth of Clostridium purpurinus, which can you know producing two zone of uh, hemolysis, uh, to which we can say uh, alpha and alpha and beta uh, zone. Okay, so this is all about the blood agar media. I hope you guys get idea about that. If still you have any kind of confusion, you can write your question into a comment. Thank you so much for watching.